trajectory, a speech warm-up draft. So if you're not familiar, instead of writing it out, I just talk it through. So here's my little intro that of course I wouldn't do, but I'm just saying it here for the record. Here we go. I'm going to shoot for six to eight minutes, but I don't really have a clock in front of me, so I'm just going to try to get the main ideas across. Again, this is a really rough draft based on a, must have been like 30 minute early morning spewing of philosophy Sunday morning, I think it was, where I really got some clarity on this idea of trajectory. All right, I'm going to check the time really quick on this. Uh, or am I already at 44 seconds? I'm going to go for just a minute. This is how I practice, by the way. If you're curious, I, I'm in the woods with Pepper and I'm hitting record. I'm not doing video. No worry there. And I'm almost at one minute. So here we go. Trajectory. Trajectory. <laughs> it's not a word we hear every day. And yet, if you're in the aerospace industry, or you're an astronaut, then you probably hear it on a more frequent basis. What does it mean, trajectory? Let's go to the astronauts for a moment. If you are an astronaut, and you are going to point your rocket ship to Saturn, and you are going to adjust the coordinates on your flight system leaving Earth, taking into consideration all the factors of the movements of the universe, and you are going to point your rocket ship at Saturn. Easy peasy, right? From A to B. We're at A, Earth. We want to go to B, Saturn. Great. Super simple. If we alter the trajectory later... So let's say we decide we get to Saturn and we think, you know what? We really want or wanted to go to Jupiter, but now we're at Saturn. Now we're on Saturn and we want to go to Jupiter. So what do we do? Well, now we go from B to C, the letter C, right? A, B, C. Seems clear enough from A to B to C. Yet Saturn and Jupiter are... are pretty far away from each other. I mean, maybe they're closer than Earth is to Saturn, but Saturn is to Jupiter. It's still a trip. If we want to bring this back to uh, Earth, let's say I'm in Amsterdam and I think I want to go to Munich in southern Germany, and then later I decide I want to go to Prague. Follow me here, A to B to C. Seems pretty simple, and this is how we do normal life. We go from A, we have the goal of B, and then later we decide, oh, gee, I'd actually actually like to go to C. And that's fine, totally fine. Nothing wrong with this scenario. Except, of course, that you spent all the time to get to Munich or to get to Saturn, where you really, later you thought, oh, you know, I really want to go to Prague or I really want to go to Jupiter. Now, of course, Prague is closer to Munich than Jupiter is to Saturn, but it's still all relative. Trajectory. Now, what we did was that we didn't actually change our trajectory. We went from A to B, and then we went from B to C. Now, what if we back up a moment, and how much of an alteration in our trajectory would be necessary to go from Earth to Jupiter directly. Now, of course, you might say, well, we didn't know we wanted to go to Jupiter. Correct. I get it. So, or, or we, get, we think, well, I thought we wanted to go to Munich. And then only later we decided we want to go to Prague. Absolutely true. Absolutely possible. But let's say, deep in your heart of hearts, that you kind of knew you wanted to go to Jupiter. Or you thought maybe I'd like to go to Jupiter. Or maybe I'd like to go to Prague instead of Munich. So what needs to happen early on is the tiniest of alterations in your trajectory from the outset. So when you're leaving Amsterdam or rocketing away from Earth, there is the slightest of changes that is going to make a big difference later. 
So with the rocket ship, if we're on Earth and you imagine a little graphic of the little rocket ship, it's pointing to Saturn, and then you go tick, and it's one tiny little smidgen of a change. And we just changed the trajectory of the rocket to go from Saturn to Jupiter. Or if I'm in Amsterdam and I want to go to Munich, but I go tick, and now I'm going to Prague. So from the early on part of the trip, it's a very small change. Now, this is great, Bradley, all this astro travel and, and travel through Europe, but how does this affect my daily life? How does this affect my real life? Let's bring the analogy on to goals or dreams or bucket listy type things. For example, I'm an author. Let's talk about writing a book. Let's say that your goal is to write a book. You'd like to write a book. Great. So you might here. Let me tell you my experience, what usually happens in this scenario. Usually from A to B to C is A is the current moment and the present day. And people say, I want to write a book. And what do they do? What is B? Now you would think it would be like write a book or something, right? No, no. What often happens is B is the planet of procrastination, <laughs> the planet of prolonging action, of preventing, ooh, procrastination, preventing, prolonging. And maybe it's, for example, retirement. You think, I'm going to write a book when I retire. So that makes A is the present day, B is retirement, and C is potentially a book. Now remember back to Saturn and Jupiter and stuff. What if, what, how far away is B to C? Is the retirement to writing a book? Well, frankly, not only is, are you potentially not closer to your final destination, I dare to state that just like a planet, maybe in that time between now and when you retire, that retirement and the writing a book have drifted apart even further. So that potentially, C, your, your real destination, is even further away from B. You follow me here? Now, this is easier to comprehend than the whole Munich and Prague and Saturn and Jupiter, because if you have your real goal, then what action can you take what energy do you need to drum up to change your trajectory now or in the present day or at least very soon and not first go to what you think is the idea like B but change your trajectory change your path change your route now to go from A to be to what I like to spell B S E E. And what I what we're gonna do here then is we are going to make A and B closer together. We are gonna make B an easy goal. Let's say B is Venus or B is Mercury. And you might think, Bradley, Jupiter is not <laughs> Mercury is not on the way to Jupiter. I got to tell you about your ninth grade uh, astrology. Is it astrology? No, astronomy. <laughs> See how much I uh, know about that stuff. Right? So what are we going to do? We are going to change B. We are going to change B so that we get there sooner. And then we can see a new C. Let me spell that out for you. So that we can see, S-E-E, -E, a new C, the letter C. What we're doing is we are triggering a change, an alteration in our plan so that we have a new intermediate destination of B to get to our real destination of C. You following? This is fun stuff. This is powerful stuff. If you can change your trajectory at A, at the present moment, 
and take an action now, a small, tiny, possibly minuscule action, and change your intermediate destination of B, then we can change, we can bring closer, we can make more real the final destination of C. And now you, you probably caught on to my little play on spelling there with S-E-E, -E, because I believe that the letter C, although it sounds like your final destination, what you really want is to be able to see S-E-E. -E. Because after A, present moment, you've left, you took energy, you took action, then you got to B, which was closer, sooner, more achievable, more finishable, a smaller win, a quick success, and then you're going to see a new C. There you have it. Trajectory. Altering the course of your future by changing the current trajectory of your present. Thank you very much. And a boom chicka boom, I see it. Wow, I'm at 11 minutes 24. That went way over time. So hey, that's that. I um, hope you enjoyed that. That was my, I actually, this, I, by the way, I've never done this. I've nev not never done the practice. I've never practiced this particular topic. But this is how I practice. This is how I uh, make these happen. So I hope you enjoyed this. And I, I, I don't know about you, but I learned from this. I got some, some nuggets in here. And here, here's the thing. Here, here is the actual process in working. What happened? Here's what happened. I took the, the meta, but I walked through the, um, I walked through the talk. So what I did was I went from A to B to C in my talk because I'm at A. It is Tuesday morning outside. In fact, I think I'm going to do a video here and give you 12 minutes of video of the woods. I walked through the talk and I, got, I went from A to B to C. So what did I do? I took action. I left the station. I left the planet and I was heading towards B. What was B? B is my draft from today. That's all. That was my destination was B. And now what did I see? I saw potentially a new C. And one thing that I learned that I can remember, I want to listen back to this, because that's also super important, is listening back, is rehearsing again, is looking over or listening to your, your draft and seeing what, what went well, what could use some improvement, right? So uh, for me, I really like the idea that if you leave now and go towards B, potentially C moves away from B in a way that you didn't expect just like with the retirement example. I thought I was gonna retire and then, I was, then quickly I could write a book, but it turns out that I'm gonna retire and then I, I might never write a book. So, that's that. Uh, that's it. I, uh, kind of behind the scenes here, part of this is a complete and utter ploy for marketing for what I consider a change in trajectory and that would be my book called One, O-N-E, which is basically taking one action on one word on one day that will change your trajectory of your year. There you have it. That's it. I'm going to uh, give you... Oh, I just said... Oh, I don't I'm very much. I'm going to give you a backdrop of the woods I've been walking because I've just been doing audio. Because, by the way, on a rehearsing note, you know, don't do audio. It just adds another element that you have to pay attention to. So just enjoy audio outside of the birds or traffic. Wherever you are. All right. That's all for it.